<laughs> Let me start with a problem. Say you have a spacecraft orbiting the Earth in a circular orbit. Let's call this initial orbit Orbit A, which has a radius R sub A. Now say you want to transfer the spacecraft into a higher circular orbit B. It is still a circular orbit, but with a bigger radius R sub B. Question is, how do I make it jump from a lower orbit A to a higher orbit B? Let me give you a hint. The spacecraft will have to change its velocity, or in other words, it has to speed up a little bit to make the leap to the higher orbit. Now how does that work? Remember, a circular orbit has a constant velocity. If we change its velocity, it won't be a circular orbit anymore. In this case, if we change its velocity, we will change the orbit's shape, aka eccentricity, and its size, aka the semi-major axis of the orbit. If we can change the velocity just right, we can get it to move in an elliptical orbit. And we hope that this elliptical orbit has a far enough apogee so that it reaches orbit B. Here's the thing, it is not solved yet. It needs to readjust its velocity so that it won't fall back down to our survey. It needs to park itself in orbit B. Again, we have to do another change of velocity at this point here. And now it is in orbit B. And that is how you transfer the spacecraft from orbit A to orbit B. So now we know the trick to transfer the spacecraft from orbit A to a higher orbit B. It is by a doubly tangent transfer ellipse, which has a perigee at a point in the lower orbit and an apogee at the higher orbit. Now I told you just now that we have to make two delta v's in order to first move the spacecraft into the transfer ellipse and next to park into the final orbit. We need the difference between the initial orbital speed and the perigee speed. The initial orbital speed is v equals to the square root of gravitational parameter mu divided by r sub a. Next, the perigee speed can be calculated from the speed formula derived from the vis viva equation. Now a here, the semi-major axis, is equivalent to r sub a plus r sub b divided by 2. Look again at the figure to confirm this. Now delta v1 is just the absolute difference between these two values. We use the same method to calculate the second delta v. We also know the orbital speed of the circular orbit b is We know the spacecraft at the apogee point has a speed of Therefore, delta V2 is just the absolute difference between these two values. The total change of velocity needed for the whole maneuver is delta V1 plus delta V2. And this maneuver between two circular orbits here is called the Hohmann transfer.